All right, this is the crash course for homeostasis in the body. <clears throat> what we have already learned about homeostasis is that it is the steady balance needed to maintain in order for our body to function properly. We have different things called feedback mechanisms in our body to help control the amounts of chemicals that are released or going around in our body. An example would be hormones. So major areas that need homeostasis and need balance is our body temperature, our water level, our carbon dioxide and oxygen level, and our blood glucose level. Go ahead and write these in your notes packet as we go through. So feedback mechanisms. These occur in the body when chemical levels get too high or too low. The key player in this is the hypothalamus, which is part of the brain that receives the signal from the rest of the body and notifies the brain of the chemical imbalance. Depending on what organ system is affected, different areas are activated to help control or limit the disruption of the body. Some feedback systems occur automatically in our body, but also some trigger us to act in a certain behavior. So an automatic example would be when it's cold outside, your body shivers. A behavioral example would be when blood glucose levels or the sugar levels in your body are low, you become hungry and you have to eat something. Okay, important EOC note, there are tons of feedback systems in our body. It is impossible for you to memorize all of them. We don't have enough time. For many of the EOC questions regarding feedback systems, you will be given a diagram or a chart. The key things you need to always do are use the information that's provided in the question, circle those keywords from the question, and diagram to help narrow down to the correct answer. Eliminate those wrong answer choices. Okay, first one of body temperature. As body temperature increases, our blood flow increases. So our heart starts pumping a little bit faster. Um, also, sweat is produced. As body temperature decreases, our blood flow decreases. So our circulatory system kind of slows down because we're not getting enough or as much blood to the body as we should be. And our body shivers to try and warm us up. That happens automatically. For water levels, as water level increases, the individual has to excrete water through the urination, so our excretory system, to remove the waste. As water level decreases, individual becomes thirsty and must drink water, bring more water into the body. All right, carbon dioxide and oxygen levels. As carbon dioxide levels increase, oxygen levels decrease, so they're always opposite of each other. So as carbon dioxide goes up, our oxygen levels go down. And we remember from yesterday from the body systems lesson that we want more oxygen, we do not want carbon dioxide. So when this happens, the person begins to breathe super heavily in order to bring in more oxygen and rid the body of excess carbon dioxide. That's why when you're running, you get, if you get out of breath, you're breathing so heavily because these gas levels in our body are so out of balance. Okay, blood glucose level. As glucose level increases or sugar increases, the person feels full and our pancreas releases something called insulin. As glucose level decreases, person feels hungry and our pancreas releases something called glucagon. All right, so once again, for the EOC, you're not going to know everything about every single body system or feedback loop. Important thing is to use those keywords in the questions to help narrow down and focus on the diagram. So let's go through, through some practice questions together. First one. When humans exercise, they use glucose rapidly. First keyword, use glucose rapidly. So we're using it up, it's decreasing. In a healthy person, the body usually maintains stable glucose levels even while exercising. Which process helps the body maintain glucose levels during exercise? So we've got our keywords here and we're given a diagram in our question. So if we're using glucose, glucose levels are going to decrease because we are using it we're using our glucose. So we're gonna look at this side of our diagram. As the glucose levels decrease, now I'm looking for keywords. What happens according to the arrows? So release of additional blood cells. We don't even see them mention blood cells on here. Production of insulin. Insulin is not mentioned on this side of the diagram. Insulin is only mentioned when glucose is too high or increase. So we know it's not B. Storage of glycogen. Storage don't see anything storing or release of glucagon. I see following this side of the arrow, the key word that I run into is glucagon, only 
mentioned in part D. So that's our answer. All right, next one. The body does not produce too much of hormones because, so why do we not produce too much of something? Our keywords. A, the excretory system controls the amount released. B, feedback mechanisms control the amount released. C, cells can store any excess hormones they receive, or the body can produce only fixed amounts of each hormone. The only thing that is involved in preventing us from producing too much of something is these feedback mechanisms, our keyword. Helps control the amount released. All right, moving on to behavior. There's also some you try questions in your notes packet, so make sure you complete those. Changes in behavior. Animal behavior is motiv motivated by reproduction and survival, two main things that motivate how things act. Stimuli from the environment causes all living things to react in some type of way. So looking at that, planaria are flatworms. You do not need to know what those are in order to answer the question. That commonly live in streams and ponds. They can detect light and dark. When given a choice, they move away from the light and into the dark. This behavior most likely benefits planaria by helping them to what? Why would they want to move from an area that's light to an area that's dark? Avoid excessive exposure to light, avoid predators, find food, or identify toxic chemicals. The main thing that's causing them to act the way that they're acting is they're trying to avoid or blend into their environment so that they don't get eaten. That's what motivates behavior. All right. Asa went for a walk in the woods. He noticed that a rabbit sitting very still under a bush. What would most likely happen if he ran straight towards the rabbit? So thinking about how the rabbit would react if he just starts sprinting towards him. A, the rabbit would continue to stay still. That's not going to happen unless it's a messed up rabbit. It's not going to just stay still if somebody's running at it. B, when Asa got too close to the bush, the rabbit would run away as fast as possible. C, when Asa got close to the bush, the rabbit would try to bite him and scratch him. He's clearly much bigger than the rabbit. The rabbit's not going to try and fight him. D, as soon as Asa started to run, the rabbit would start to dig a hole and hide. So the main thing that this rabbit's going to do is immediately run away and try to escape. All right. The diagram shows an experiment similar to the one carried out by Charles Darwin and his son Francis in 1880. You don't need to know anything about that to answer the question. Which conclusion about the response of the grass seedling is supported by this experiment? So take a look at what's happening. So light's coming at it. It's leaning towards the light. When the tip is covered with a clear cap, still bending towards the light, tip is covered with a dark cap and it's no longer bending. And tip is removed and it's no longer bending towards the light. It's not affected. So which part of this plant is affected by the light? The base responds more to light than gravity. The base isn't really doing anything here. B, the tip responds more to gravity than to light. C, the base causes the response to light. Or D, the tip causes the response to light. If you take a look at the tip, it's leaning towards the light. The second we put a dark thing on it or cut it off, it doesn't respond anymore. So the answer is D. All right, go ahead and make sure you work through the rest of that packet um, and the... Uh, sample EOC problems. Make sure, even if you don't know what the question is talking about, look for those keywords and turn in the completed packet to my desk. We're going to go over them on Monday.